Hey y'all. I thought while I had it fresh in my mind, I would tell you about Diesel. Now I told you in the previous video, he was a giant standard. He was midnight black. And my son, Sam, named him after Van Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably, oh gosh, six? Yeah, because he was starting elementary school, and I remember how emotional that was for me. But anyway, I'm going to give you the background. Now, my sixth husband and I had, um, we were living in Washington. We didn't have, um, well, we did have, well, I'm not going to say that. I, I don't know. I get really confused, y'all. I've had several different lives, as you will know. But anyway, um, we didn't have a dog. But I just really felt like... I needed a dog. Oh yes, we had Sammy. I remember that. Anyway, um, I've always been a dog person. And uh, I really was feeling like I needed a dog. And I started talking to my husband about it. And every time I would bring it up, he'd say, you don't need a dog. Well, I did need a dog. Dogs are very thera therapeutic. <laughs> and I know many of y'all know that. They're very therapeutic. Anyway, um, So finally, I just decided that I was going to get a puppy. So he said, you don't need a dog. And by that time, I was getting pretty irritated. I said, you know what? First of all, you don't need a Harley, but you have you have a Harley and you have a new pickup truck. So you don't need that Harley. I suggest you get rid of it. And the second thing I need to say to you is, you are not my daddy. I am not asking you if I can have a puppy. Now, I wish you were supportive about this, but obviously you are not. And then I just walked away. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, this was the husband that was so awesome. I mean, really, you could clone this man. But this was one issue that was not good. So anyway, I had been looking in the newspaper. Yep, back then we got a newspaper. You know those things that are made out of paper and black ink and you open them up <laughs> and you read them, you actually turn pages. Yeah. So I've been looking in the newspaper and all my life I either found strays or rescued from the pound. But I already knew what I wanted. I wanted a standard poodle. Now I had a poodle when I was young, young teenager, 13, 14 years old. And I knew how smart they were, but I wanted a big one this time. 
So one day I saw this ad in the newspaper and it, this person had three standard poodle puppies. They lived quite a ways away, not that far, a couple hours. So I called them and she said, well, we've only got one left and it's a little male. So I said, okay, I'm coming up to look at this puppy. Now y'all, I had a very good friend. She's still a good friend. She lives in Texas. Her name is Maureen. And so I called Maureen and I said, Maureen, you want to go up with me and look at this puppy? And she said, okay. So we got in the car and we went up there and I saw his parents. Like I said, his dad was a giant standard. He was huge, you guys, like almost like a great name. Almost like you, Magnum. And then a standard size mom. And so they were both black. So Diesel was jet black. He was about, he was almost three months old. So we started kind of haggling on the price a little bit. And this lady was kind of an older lady and she lived somewhere else and she had come down to where her son was to sell these puppies. She was staying at his house. And so she asked me for $400. I almost fell out. I mean, I never spent that kind of money on an animal, y'all. But I just had to have it. So we haggled a little bit and I ended up paying. Her son said, Mom, you're getting ready to go home. You don't want to be stuck with this last puppy. So I paid $300 for Diesel, y'all. So we put him in the car. Oh my gosh, what a bundle of joy. He was so awesome, you guys. He was a substantial dog, even at three months old. So we got home and I, of course I was nervous, y'all. I mean, my husband had made it clear that I did not need a dog. Well, let me tell you, he did not need that Harley, but did he get rid of it? No. Did he spend money on it? Yes. Now, I never begrudged him his Harley. His comment to me was, I had this Harley when we got married. <laughs> oh, Mr. Nearly Perfect. That did not matter to me. So, anyway, um, I was nervous. And we got home. And he was sitting in his big man chair, and it was the weekend, he was watching a football game. And I brought Diesel in the house. Now, Sam was ecstatic. Oh my gosh. He was literally jumping up and down saying, Mom, Mom, can I name him? Can I name him? Now, if looks could kill, I got one from my husband. He said, that dog is not sleeping in my room. I said, okay. So I stayed downstairs for two nights and slept on the couch and we had big patio doors that went out to the backyard. So I would get up several times in a night and I would take Diesel outside to go potty. And I didn't let him go out there and play or whatever, lollygag. If he didn't go pee pee, then I'd bring him back in the house and I'd wait another hour or two and I'd take him back out. 
Well, let me tell y'all, in two nights, that puppy was potty trained. The third night I spent downstairs, he woke me up. He would sit next to the couch and raise his paw up and hit me with it. And I would take him outside and he would do his business and we'd come back in. So y'all, I was in love with that puppy. But my husband said again, that dog is not sleeping in my room. I said okay now we had a really nice little guest room y'all <laughs> it was so cute and so foo-foo and we had guy friends that would come over and spend the night and they always laughed at my guest room had a lot of pink in it so, I moved into the guest room, and y'all, my husband and I were both pretty stubborn people, but we never really had problems in our marriage. We never fought. Now, we might go a day without speaking to each other, and then one of us would just crack up, and the other one... In half a mile, keep crack. right at the fork to continue on I-215 North. Follow signs I'm for Riverside, that, San Bernardino. My sweet little GPS. But anyway, um, I slept in that guest room for... Um, Right at the fork to continue months. on I 215 North. Almost six months, you guys. And finally, he relented. I miss you, babe. If that stupid dog has to sleep in our room, I guess that'll be okay. <laughs> he was really quite fond of Diesel by that time. And Diesel had this toy. Somebody gave it to him. I can't remember who it was, but it was like this big, it was probably a foot long, maybe longer, and it was a rubber chicken. It was ugly as all get out, y'all. I'm not a, it was floppy and it had a squeaky in it. Now, it just seemed like he timed it for whenever my husband was sitting in his man chair trying to watch the news on TV and I would be cooking. Now these two rooms ran into each other. It was a huge space. <laughs> and Diesel would get behind his chair and squeak that chicken. And I'm telling you, my husband, he would get up open the patio door and throw the chicken outside. And of course, Diesel would fly out the door and my husband would shut the patio door. <laughs> they had kind of a love-hate relationship. And um, he actually started taking Diesel with him sometimes to work. But I ended up I, I was not working at the time that I got diesel, but I ended up uh, having to go to work. Well, diesel had the worst separation anxiety. My neighbors complained. In fact, somebody put a nasty letter in my mailbox. Now, why didn't they just come to my door and knock and tell me what was going on? I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on when I went to work. I left the patio door open enough so he could go in and out to potty. Well, evidently, he was barking and howling the whole time I was gone. So, I had to rehome him. 
Now, luckily, my veterinarian, I used to drop Diesel off once a week and they would board him during the day for me for a few hours. And the reason I did that was so he wouldn't have that anxiety. Well, a lady had brought her standard poodle in for something and she happened to see Diesel. He was playing down in the reception area. Well, behind the desk with the um, receptionist. And she told my veterinarian, she said, if they ever need to rehome this puppy, we want him. So when I went in to see my vet, I was crying. Duh. And I was so upset that I told him, I said, I have to rehome Diesel. He's got horrible separation anxiety. And he said, you know what? Let me make a phone call. So he called the folks that had the standard poodle. And they wanted to meet me and Diesel at a big park over by our house. So I took Diesel to the park and they brought their dog. He was a gray standard poodle. He was gorgeous. Well, they hit it off. I mean, immediately. And they were running. This was a huge park, y'all. It wasn't like a regular park. It was huge. They were running and playing and having the best time. While I was happy to see that, it was breaking my heart. So we agreed to meet up again. And we did. And they were just crazy about each other. Now this was a retired couple. They lived in a really nice home. I wanted to go and see where Diesel was gonna be living. And they told me I could come see him anytime. So, I got Diesel's things together, his rubber chicken. Um, and I took him to his new home. And I sat with the couple and we were talking they took trips all the time and they had a van and Diesel and their dog would always go with them. They were reassuring me. They knew it was literally breaking my heart, y'all. So, um, I left Diesel. Cried all the way home, cried all day, probably cried a few days. And my husband was, he was just sorry for me. He knew how much I loved that dog. And my little boy was distraught. He really couldn't understand y'all what was happening. Why? Even though I explained to him. Well, about a week later, two weeks later, I went over to visit Diesel, and they kept his name. Thank goodness he was used to it. He was almost two. And, um, oh my gosh, when I got out of my car at his new home, he was all over me. And their other dog came and wanted some attention and Diesel turned his head around and snapped and growled at him. He didn't want that dog to have any of my attention. So we just had the best visit and I left again. This time I knew I could not go back. <clears throat> I remember like it was yesterday that um, I, um, when I got home, 
half a mile. Keep I left to stay on I-215 North. And I just slid down onto the floor and cried. I did call them, and Diesel was awesome. They had so much fun. So Keep left what? to stay on I-215 North. I, um, I did the right thing for him. He was so happy. Continue on I-215 North for 20 miles. But anyway, that's the story of Diesel, y'all. And it still breaks my heart, and I still think about him, and I still miss him. So anyway, that was not a fun thing that I did. But traveling, I'm on the 215 now. This is awesome. Thank y'all. And you do something fun today. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye now.